good afternoon to everyone i welcome all of you to the 75th lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the department of nonlinear dynamics bharti dasan university with the support from rosa 2.0 it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker professor biswajyoti day from pune professor day is a well known person in nonlinear dynamics in india right now he is working as a emeritus professor at department of physics uh savitri bai apole university pune professor day is a well known person and he won several awards and recognitions for his work he has been awarded indo us science and technology forum and the aps professorship award he got a uk um, a joke award of <laughs> university of pune pune for excellence in teaching and research he has also won senior associateship from ICTP Trieste Italy for two times and he also got insa exchange fellowship for collaborative research and to visit Harriet Park University in United Kingdom he has uh, supervised several phd students and acted as mentor for few postdoctoral students he has been inv invited to deliver talks in several national and international conferences and right now running a couple of research projects apart from this he is associated with our department for a long time more than 30 years i think at least to my knowledge indeed it's a very long time association needless to, needless to say he knows everyone working here with this short introduction now invite professor day to deliver his lecture over to you professor yeah thank you santil uh, i'm very happy to be here and uh, professor lakshmanan is also here and as you say that i know uh, most of the people in your department for a very long time and many of the nonlinear dynamics people also in this country so it is nice to meet all of you once again so let me start by lecture and uh, here it is yeah okay yes, yes perfect yeah. yes so here it is uh, this topic is actually uh, different is actually an example of how nonlinear dynamics can be used to do uh, problems in different fields of uh, research in particular i have taken an example of directly connecting our nonlinear dynamic study or solving nonlinear differential equations like rossby-tversky equation or poisson stern condensate and simulation to connect it with experiment that is done in tifr in superconductors so since the topic is such a different about the superconductivity and the background may not be known to many of you so i have decided to uh, tell a little bit of the background of the problem and then i will tell about the plan of the talk so here is the <coughs> my collaborators uh, uh, rai choudhury at tifr mumbai he has done all the experiments in uh, uh, vortex site is melting uh, in superconductor uh, low temperature superconductor actually what is interesting is that this uh, vortex that is melting in high temperature superconductor this experiment is not even done today till today it is so complex system so we can do a model for low temperature superconductor as we have done this experiment here they have done and our theory goes with that and in fact we have made our simulation in conjunction with their experiment we have cannot directly simulate the thing we have to connect it to the experiment and then and uh, <clears throat> we show that how our study can at least predict about the possible vortex site smelting in uh, high temperature superconductor so so the uh, collaborator here uh, are uh, mithun my old student kuiri who is is in poland they are all spread out in many places and uh, the funding is from sir okay so the background here is uh, the dynamics of rotating bose einstein condensate shows collective excitations of nonlinear structure like soliton vortex and vortex cities so these are the nonlinear excitations of different nonlinear uh, equations that we know about so vortex actually solution you can need to get at least minimum two dimension one two space dimension and time 
and vortex also form vortex lattice, proper lattice structure. They arrange themselves in the lattice structure. And then we want to see that what is the corresponding dynamics. Okay. Now, in Bose-Einstein condensate, it is one of the places where you can see that uh, uh, very clearly this uh, uh, Bose, uh, this what, when we have uh, Bose-Einstein condensate, if you rotate, Post-Einstein condensate like superfluid or uh, semiconductor superconductor, or uh, what you call as the Bose-Einstein condensate itself, we get vortices. Now, what is interesting problem comes up is that if you rotate, load them on a ro rotating optical lattice, then we have control over the system and we can do many physics problems. That is the whole idea of. Uh, so the vortex, when you uh, load an optical lattice, they get pinned. Pin means really pinning. That means each vortex will sit on one of the <clears throat> impurity potential or pinning potential, what you call as the optical lattice potential, and uh, they cannot move. Okay? And this is very important problem for pinning mechanism is very important if you want to do what is called as the superconductor. Why pinning is required? Because if you want to increase the critical current in superconductor, then what you have to assure, assure that the vortices do not move around. Okay, if the vortices move around, then the critical current decreases. So our job is to make it straight, stand straight. And this is obtained by vortex that is pinning. And this pinning is done by putting impurity in the superconductor in real life. For us, we pinning, of course, it's a random pinning. So we introduce it through optical that is a random optical that is. So these vortices in uh, both instant condensers are also useful for studying the problem of quantum turbulence. And uh, in Three dimension, this quantum turbulence take the form of a chaotic tangle of vortex lines, and in two dimension, they reduce to the random distribution of point vortices. So, this quantum turbulence uh, problem can be studied by using these uh, vortices. Now, another important problem here you can study in condensed matter physics is that if you have a deep optical lattice, then this is what is called outer code boson on deep optical lattice gives a way to study quantized vortices and quantum phase or correlated boson in various optical lattice geometry. That means you can study the quantum phase transition problems by putting this uh, uh, condensate on optical lattice which are very deep. Okay, In that case, uh, this becomes something like a, what is the system we call as the correlated bosons or strongly correlated systems, Okay, which has become a subject of very uh, big interest nowadays. And uh, nowadays, people have been uh, have produced many kinds of lattices actually in real life, like honeycomb lattice, of course, is known to us, Kagome lattice, Hilev lattice. So, all these pe people are studying the strongly correlated electron in this lattice. We can study the strongly correlated bosons on this lattice and study the phase diagram, bosonic analogs of frictional forming, uh, quantum Hall effect, and vort uh, vortex solid state uh, states in such system. So these are the problems actually of very recent origin. And what I wanted to show you is that we can study this problem in our lab by studying Bose-Einstein condensate, okay? In a random potential, uh, or what is called as the pinning potential. It can be random, it can be regular, depending upon what kind of, like for example, if I have the optical lattice at honeycomb lattice or something, these are regular potential. So we, we study the motion, motion of the bosons on this lattice and study the, quantum phase transition like boson in quantum Hall effects and so on. Now, what is interesting is that if we, we know that this picture all of us have seen of Bose-Einstein condensate, so that if you rotate Bose-Einstein condensate, it produces vortices and vortex lattice that manifest the superfluid property. So this is an experimental result which shows that you see that this is the vortex that is produced by this one. And if similar lattices also produced, by in a superconductor. Only thing is that it is different. It has to produce in a different way. For example, if you want to produce vortices in superconductor, you have to apply a magnetic field and it can be produced only in type two superconductor. Type one superconductor magnetic field do not enter. Type two superconductor magnetic field enters, but only in some specific places. These black dots wherever you can see are the places where the magnetic field is entering. Similarly, the black dots here are the vortices. Here, these are the vortices. Definition of vortices are different here. In both sensor condenses, the vortex means it's a density deep. That means there is no particles here, and the particles are in the white region. Similarly, here, 
the black regions are the regions of the magnetic field and the white regions are the Cooper pairs. So the electron don't come near where the magnetic field is maximum. It is minimum here. Uh, that, so that is the vortex density minimum at the vortex. Similarly, the density minimum here. Same thing happens in superfluid. If you take superfluid in a container and rotate, you see that beyond a certain uh, uh, frequency, then you can see that it forms vortices. Vortices means density deep. This lines shows the density deep actually. There is no fluid superfluid here, but the superfluid rotates around this. So in superconductor also the current, there is a current which rotates around that. Okay. So there is a similarity between all three systems. And this is the picture which tells me that if I study both instant condensate, I can also study superfluid properties here, or I can study superconducting properties. Okay. So if I can study both instant condensate in my lab, for example, using numerically, I can at least either match it with the superconducting results that is produced real experimentally somewhere, or I can produce it, uh, predict about the uh, behavior of uh, high temperature superconductor, for example, where vortex it is mating in such superconductor has not even taken place now. So, but we can do it in our theoretical calculations, analytic calculation, numerical calculation, and we can predict. So, this is the main idea about uh, this talk actually, how I can use both instant condensate study to study the vortex dynamics in superconductor, superfluid, and in general. Uh, in both instances. So, the, so uh, here is a picture. Yeah. How do you how do you define mathematically the vortex in B? Yeah. 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 B mathematically it is defined as a circulation actually. It is uh, defined as a circulation around it. So it is like a, it is a non-analytic function. If you really go by mathematically, it's a non-analytic function because it is a deep in a, there is no place uh, density at the center. So it is something like a hole. Okay, if that hole was not there, so there is an analytic function. So the circulation around this is zero. If you integrate this, uh, the density mod i squared dx, if you integrate around a circle, then you will find that it is zero if there is no vortex. But if there is a vortex, then we know from complex integration that this integral will be non-zero and that is called as the circulation of a vortex. So this is the definition of the vortex mathematically in superconductor as well in superfluid and BAC also. So here, actually, I had a definition with me, but uh, for this uh, presentation, I have not brought it here. I had to, I tried to put it uh, as much as physics and uh, non-mathematical in nature. But you just remember that vortex means there is absence of density. For example, here, the black region, it's absence of density, which means there is a hole there. So if the function is analytic everywhere, the function is non-zero, then if you integrate around this region, this function will have a non-zero value and that is called as the quantum circulation of the vortex and that's why it is called quantized vortices. This circulation, this integral around this will give me a multiples of n times 2 pi. Okay, so where n can be 1, 2, 3, 4. In fact, at the end of my talk, when I come to um, uh, what you call as the vortex in strongly correlated system, you will see that this definition more clearly. Okay, so for today's talk, I have not kept it mathematics part, but it is something our definition. So what is will be defined in terms of a absence of density in space, here absence of density and absence of density, and there is a circulation around that, and that circulation, if you integrate around this, you get a non-zero value because the function is not analytic at this point because it is uh, zero here. Okay, so, and that circulation is the value, and that value is quantized. Okay, it is some multiples of some minimum value, what is called the minimum quantization, uh, minimum value of quanta. So in superconductor, for example, this will be a quantum of flux. Okay, and and uh, like uh, how much of quanta of uh, how much of flux of magnetic field is passing through this? Like okay, so for us, for B C, this will be the density. Okay, if I circulate, if I integrate the circulation around this, you will get the density, which is non-zero value. And I will show you when I come to more in the uh, strongly correlated system, this picture. So how do we create the, uh, uh, this picture experimentally? So these are the vortices. You see that if you rotate it very slowly, this is the condensate, okay? Then you see there is no vortex. That means there is no density deep. As you increase the rotation, you see that it has started some deep here. You can see it very clearly. There is a density deep. Okay, 
you increase this, rotate it faster and you will see that more number of vortices has appeared. So number of vortices depend on the rate of rotation. Rotated even faster, more number of vortices appear. Okay, density deep. So these are the black regions actually in this picture. And then what you do is that you switch off the trap and then uh, you time of, you allow it to expand the gas and time of flight experiment you can use to find this picture at the background, which is that abrigos of lattice, okay, which I was telling the vortex lattice. So here it is done, uh, condensate is here. So it has to be rotated. So it is rotated by laser light, which is a green color here. So it is rotated by laser light. And then interaction between these, there is a magnetic coil here, which controls the inter interaction between the uh, atoms. And then this gives rise to what is called, the, you can already see that here is a density dip. So this picture is expanded here, there is a density dip. And then you release the gas and you see this vortex that is formed. Okay, so this is in both instant condensate. Now remember that I showed you the picture. So this is the hexagonal that is, you can see that six fold hexagonal that is structure, okay, in both instant condensate. Now I told you that this is the characteristics of superfluidity and also superconductivity. Superfluidity and superconductivity are the same thing. Actually, both of them are both Einstein condensate system. And that's why we can study these things by both Einstein condensate, okay, alternative. So now what is the problem? Problem of physics is that this we can produce. Like for example, if you solve the gross pitavisky equation, which describes the dynamic of both Einstein condensate, this can be solved. This can be easily produced, actually, it's not a problem. But the thing is that we have to do a problem and we connect it to a physical problem. So what is the physics problem that we are interested in? The problem is that this that is that has been formed in superconductor or in any other solid system actually. This is called hexagonal that is because this is six fold structure symmetry. So there is a melting of such uh, uh, lattice structure. And this melting phenomena actually has been going on for a long time in physics in statistical mechanics, also in physics. People do not understand that how this lattice melts. Today, of course, we know much more. Today, we know that this lattice can be melted by what you call as the increasing the temperature. So that is called the thermal melting. So the temperature induces melting in the problem. But we have an alternative mechanism of melting, and that is by putting disorder in the system. Disorder means impurity in the system. And you remember that in real physical system, like superconductor, there is always impurity okay, in the system. You cannot get an impurity free. Even if you can get an impurity free superconductor, actually we add impurities from outside to increase its conductivity, just like we do for high temperature superconductor or for pinning of vortices with, super, uh, with the impurity to increase this critical current. So impurity is very much necessary, impurity or disorder, what we call, is very much required to do a, any physics problems, okay? So we have two mechanisms of melting. One is the thermal melting, that means increase the temperature, the lattice melts, this is the vortex that is melts, and increase the disorder in the system, in real life, this is equivalent to adding impurity in the system and then it melts. Okay. So now there is a theory. There is a theory for that. Which, and this theory has been there. As you can see there, the seminal idea of theory was given by Costalis and Thalys. If you remember, they got the Nobel Prize a few years back. Uh, in 1973, they proposed that uh, how does the melting of this hexagonal that is can take place in solid. Okay. So, or like say, for example, superconductor or any other solid. So this theory was proposed by Costalis and Thalys, and then it was further discovered, uh, developed by Halperin. Halperin also got the Nobel Prize, if you remember, uh, to a few years back before them. Nelson, Young, and that has been used to describe the melting of many two-dimensional hexagonal crystals. Now, this is what our calculation comes. This is what we are trying to do using both instant condensate. This is the hexagonal crystals, okay? And this is a hexagonal crystal in both instant condensate. So what we are going to do is verify the theory of melting that is proposed by Costalis, Thalys, Halper, and Nelson Young, and see whether this is valid for this hexagonal lattice, which is our both instant condensate. 
So the advantage is that this I can do in my lab by solving differential equation. Okay. The other advantage is that I can directly connect it to superconductor. Let me see, there is an, another example of hexagonal that is in superconductor. So they predicted that. So what is their theory? They say that the melting can take place through two-step melting. If you remember in my title of my talk, there is this uh, title of evidence of two-step melting. So this evidence, even though the theory was proposed in 1973 and 78, this evidence is coming only now. Okay, and experimentally, some people have produced some evidence, but we are doing it theoretically, either by uh, doing a computer simulation and similarly, experiment in TIFR, for example, has shown very recently, as late as 2016, that this kind of theory that is proposed here is correct. So what is the theory? They predicted that melting could proceed through an alternate route via two continuous phase transitions mediated by topological defects. So you see that this is a very loaded sentence. Okay. So how does this lattice melt? This lattice, for example, if it melts, melting of lattice, you understand that it means basically the disordering of lattice. That means the structure is lost, completely lost, and then uh, we say that the lattice is melted. Now this is the way of explaining it. But how do you do it mathematically or how do we do calculate it? That means what is happening? Now, if you see that melting from this crystal, for example, we can say that it will melt if it's, you see that this is a two-dimensional system, isn't it? It has got two invariants. One is the transitional invariance you can see from here, and another is the rotational invariance. You see that from here, if I take an atom, I rotate here, I go here, it's a six-fold rotation, okay? So by melting, what we mean is that rotation, loss of transitional ordering as well as loss of loss of rotational ordering okay so both the ordering can get lost so this is what they predicted they said that actually in real life this happens in this way that means it takes by a two continuous phase transition and first of all in the first transition thermally excited free dislocation pair proliferate in the that is creating an intermediate state between the crystallite solid and the liquid and the second transition this dislocation dissociates into discrimination producing an isotropic liquid. What does this mean? What is topological defects? Topological, now you see that defects has to come here. This is hexagonal lattice in superconductor. You see that it is a sick fold and it's a perfect lattice. No melting, no disorder, nothing. Now, when I say that the system has got melted, how does it melt? As I told you just now, it can melt by losing its transitional order and losing its rotational order. Losing its transitional order and losing its rotational order takes place in two steps. First, it produces defects. What is this topological defects? You see that this is a six-fold structure. One, two, three, four, six, five, six. Uh, you can see that there are six lines, isn't it? Six bond or six nearest neighbor. And it repeats. This is a hexagonal structure. If I want to destroy this one or if it melts, then it produces a different lattice structure, different bonding. Now, uh, coordination number. That means number of lattice points will be different. For example, excuse me, uh, which yeah. slide you are talking? Uh, yeah. Uh, because we are not seeing what you are saying. Uh, you are not seeing the picture? Yes. Uh, so, uh, do you have slide number? Or, uh, so, I am I'm moving that slide, and uh, can you see the slide, the picture here? No? Uh, no. Oh, sorry. So the, this is the slide, which is uh, title of the slide is thermally induced melting of vortex lattice in type two. No, 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 uh, no. We are seeing no. this. No, uh, no. Okay, uh, just a minute, huh? I'll just take it out. Yeah. So what I was saying is that this is perfect lattice. Can you see my cursor moving? Uh, no. Is it possible to make a pointer uh, visible? Yeah. Is, is Actually, in my thing? screen it is moving, yeah, and yeah, my screen. Yeah, now we are seeing. Yeah, it's moving. Okay. Yes, it's moving. So there are six four structures. You can see that there are six nearest neighbors. So we call it hexagonal, okay, or hexatic phase. Now what happens is that when I want to destroy this one, I have to uh, make it destroy these six four structures. So one way to make it is a five four structure and seven four structure. So if I make dislocation means a pair of five four and seven four near about each other, and discrimination means five four and seven four coordination far away from each other. 
So these are the two uh, defects that we produce. And uh, in different steps, the first time, how does the melting take place? First, it uh, reduces is completely spoils is transitional order by producing dislocations. That means a pair of five fold and seven fold coordination. That means instead of six, you use five, five and seven. And then after that, if you increase the rotation further, then even the transitional rotational uh, indices will get lost, rotational symmetry will get lost, and this will be five fold and seven fold. It will be called isolated response. Okay, they will be far away from each other. So this was a theory that was proposed by. Uh, Costarius Thauris helper in Neo. Okay, so now in this picture, uh, can you see the cursor in this picture? This six uh, centile. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you see that in this picture, this uh, that is his first step melting has done taken place. You can see that there is six four rotation is still there, but the transitional order is gone. Okay. So that is called transitional. That means it has produced dislocations, and then if I want to remove this. Uh, six four structure also I have to produce discrimination. So this is this two step melting which was proposed long back and today we can see this one in our simulation. Okay, And uh, so this was seen you can see that as late as 2009 and uh, after that STM technique was found out. Okay, STM when STM was developed this individual vortex you could see. Earlier we could not see such kind of nice individual vortex how does it move in around. Now the experiment in TIFR, what they did was something different, other way of uh, phase transition, alternate way, is that instead of thermal melting, for example, here it was a thermal melting, 1.2 degree Kelvin and 1.9 degree Kelvin, when you increase the temperature by 0.7, you can see that it has melted. So in this picture, can you see this new slide? No, 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 no. So now you see that disorder induced vortex that is melting. So instead of thermal uh, problem, now we have impurity induced or di disorder induced, and this is in real life. Okay, so here the increase in positional entropy created by the random pinning drives the order disorder transition, not the temperature. So it is the entropy is increased because of the positional entropy is increased. We call so this is the alternate rule. So what we have to do is that you see that this experiment is done as recent as 2015 and 16, and that too at low temperature superconductor. We could not see such kind of mental theory that was given uh, long back in 1970s experiment uh, theory. We could not verify it experimentally, but today because of STM technique, we can see. So in this picture, you can see that that two uh, two step melting. So as you increase the magnetic field, more number of vortex appears. So you see that six four rotation is still there. That is six uh, dots are here. As you increase. 20 kilo, kilo uh, or stud, it is still 6 4. That means rotational order is there. Okay. Rotational order is here also, but as you increase further, you see that this uh, dislocation has been created. Because of the dislocation created, now the transitional order is gone. And now, as you increase it further, everything is gone. You see that it is a continuous, instead of six points, it is a continuous work. That means it is complete melting has taken place. And then what do we calculate? How do I calculate that this is correct? So now what I do is that this is the way I'm talking about, okay? But then you have to show this, you have to show the correlation function calculation. The angular correlation function, that means that what is the bonding, the angle between the bonds, how does it getting deformed? And the distance between the bonds, how it is getting deformed, okay? Because both of them are used for spoiling the structure of the lattice. Now you can see from here, this is the correlation function they have shown that the correlation function decays with the distance, okay, G6. And then for different magnetic field, as you increase the magnetic field, it could decays faster, all right. But same picture you see we have produced by from our calculation from the bose einstein condition. Again, the decay of correlation function. So basically what I'm saying is that the experiment that is done in TIFR 7076, 2015, 16, we can do the same thing from our simulation nonlinear dynamics study in our lab by from both sensory condensing, okay, by putting impurity. So this is the main background of the talk. So let me escape, escape this. So how do I do uh, impurity in my system? Because impurities are random. So I put impurities by what is called the random impurity through optical lattice, okay. Now optical lattice is, uh, <coughs> uh, you know that it is a artificial crystal of light. So it is the, you can put two or three light to produce a kind of interference pattern. So you see that 
there is a dip here wherever this here the boson atoms are sitting here and this is like that so it is almost like electron moving in a background of our that is potential so this is that uh, that is by putting uh, interference or different laser lights you can put so you can here you see that when i was talking about the strongly interacting system what i do is that i make the depth of this one very deep so as a result the particle cannot go from one place to another place okay and they have to jump from one place to another or tunnel from one place to another and that model is a strongly correlated model and that is done by what is called as the hubbard model okay so this is another interesting way of studying strongly correlated system so you see that this is very important the optical lattice is very important by putting the optical lattice of different depths i can go from weakly interacting system to strongly interacting system or by making it random I can go to an impurity problem because impurities are inside the solid in a random way. So how do I do? I create an optical that is which I call as a dis disorder optical that is. So disorder optical that is you can see the depth is very different. So I generate this one by using what is called as the random number. Okay. Once I have a random number distributed between minus one and plus one uniformly, then I create the depth of the that is different in different places so that this particle, the boson particles which comes up and see as different potential, different space in the that is, and that is called as the random potential. And so this will be equivalent to our potential in the, uh, what you call as the um, random potential for our simulation. Okay. Now I skip one thing and I go to the uh, quantum phase transition. Can you see this slide for yes, quantum yes, phase transition? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So another problem I told you is that you can do for if the deep optical that is, I can study the problem of quantum phase transitions. And what is a quantum phase transition? It typically occurs when a topological change happens in the ground state symmetry as a function of the Hamiltonian parameter at zero temperature. So quantum phase transition takes place at zero temperature. So what happens here is there that as you change the parameter in the system, the ground state symmetry of the system changes. What kind of symmetry? Many kinds of symmetry can change. For example, in case of vortices, it is the rotational symmetry that will change. The phase, for example, will be different as you increase the parameter. So you can get a vortex with phase of 2 pi. You can get a vortex of, with 4 pi, 8 pi, 6 pi, so on. Okay. So for every parameter values, I can get one ground state, which is uh, different from the other one. And we say that this, there is a quantum phase transition in the system. So why I need to study this quantum phase transition? Because Realization of quantum phase transition, both Einstein condensation are already taken, particularly superfluid to Mott insulator transition. Some of you might be knowing that this problem, superfluid to Mott insulator transition, we study by using what is called as the Hubbard model. Hubbard model is a strongly interacting model for electrons in um, background uh, 3D transition matter, or we are doing here for boson in a deep optical that is their equivalent. Okay, so we have fermion. Uh, for example, we have fermion uh, problems like uh, 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 this uh, uh, yeah. So Mott insulator for fermions I can have, I can also have it for the bosons, okay? And now what is important is that quantized vortices, interesting quantum phases of correlated bosons in various settings symmetry. Instead of fermions, I can do it for bosons in our case, okay? Have people done it? Yes, people have done it in experiment on different kinds of lattice. Honeycomb that is, Kagamu that is, to why do they study? They unearth different phase diagram, bosonic analog of quantum Hall effect and vortex Hall state system. Okay. So what if you super fluid mode transition. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Mode transition. So I can do the same thing for bosons mode transition here. That's what is the idea. And then I can also have a what is called as the uh, uh, <clears throat> Quantum phase transition occurs for boson in rotating optical that is giving rise to the vortices in strongly interacting system. Okay, so what is vortices in this case? Again, the density dip, but the rotational symmetry are determined by the geometry of the underlying. That means rotational symmetry changes for each parameter values, and there is a phase transition from up there as the parameter value changes from one symmetry. So here, after giving this background, I think it's already <coughs> some time now. Uh, yeah. So, so now I gave the plan of the talk. Can you see Santhi? Yes, yes, yes. It's yeah. Moving. So first I will take you. So this is the plan of the talk. What 
so far whatever i have told you you have to go in this step okay this is not just the plan of the talk but this is also the plan of doing research okay in this area if you want to study for example vortices and then study the melting problem you have to start right from the number one that means vortices in rotating base single vortex first you have to find a single vortex then you have to create this vortex that is that means you take a gross bitevsk equation of post instant condensate rotate this one and find a critical velocity after which one vortex is created this is very important because this creation of single vortex we tell you how to verify your numerics that means your how good is your uh, uh, program whether it is converging nice or not and everything else a single vortex will have parameters like for example normalization constant should be one the energy should remain same it should not change over all these thing and according to feynman he said that if there is a single vortex in the system the angular momentum should become one one means one okay it's just like normalization so you numerics you get 1.0001 something like that okay and vortex that is the number of vortex that is as you increase the number of uh, rotation more you get a vortex that is now feynman had given an idea of from superfluid theory the relation between the number of vortex and the uh, rotation frequency so the idea uh, and angular momentum sorry so the idea is that the angular momentum is about two times the <coughs> number of vortex okay so this is what is and then the vortex that is is what is called as the abricus of vortex okay that was shown by abricus of for superconductivity theory and this is so you see that there are so many things here one has to reproduce this first step then one has to study the impurity problem now as we said that we have to go for random impurity but before random impurity first you have to put one impurity in the sing effect of single impurity and cluster of impurities on the vortex that is how does it produce the effect again you have to check your program by doing this thing and you can see that these publications are here i have not i will not have time to say all the all of them so i have just given you the reference so effect of random impurity is a pseudo random impurity potential after doing all this single and then two and more and then you go to pseudo random and random impurity and then you see the vortex that is melting then you have to characterize how the vortex that is melting takes place how do i know that my lattice has melted So I calculate the structure factor. If it's hexagonal, that is the structure factor will show me six points. Histogram show histogram plot will show me the of density of states will show me the continuous behavior, no gap, and correlation function. <clears throat> These are the things I have to calculate to show that the lattice has melted. Okay. Now then I have to show that this is our main idea is that we want to show that there is a signature of two-step vortex that is melting. We have seen in both instant condensate. So this is the, according to the prediction made by <coughs> earlier in 1973 and all Costa Rica studies and all that there is a two-step melting process for hexagonal that is we have seen it in BEC and in TIFR experiment like on and they have seen in real life superconductor and this is very recent as I said that in fact we wrote the paper together with the TIFR group uh, on th uh, this theory and experiment together. Okay, then I have to generalize this order. to binary bsc and i told you why we need a binary bsc because we say that for high temperature superconductor nobody knows not even any experiment done in tifr or anywhere you cannot do an experiment of vortex that is melting so far it is not done but however we can predict such kind of transition will take place or not whether it is a one step process or a two step process what would you expect for high tc by studying a binary bsc what is binary bsc to do with high tc because high temperature superconductor has two order parameters many of them not all some of them the s wave and d wave so that means there are two order parameters which is equivalent to in our bose instant condensate a binary bsc with two order parameters i1 i2 for example and the interaction between them how do we take it in uh, superconductor also they interact in a particular way so this is our idea so we have done this calculation and it is almost finished we are going to submit soon Uh, it will be in also in archive. Then you can study the vortex nucleation rotating based on density dependent gauge potential. Okay, so here this is a very recent uh, calculations. Actually, nowadays people have started uh, doing these gauge potential studies. If you have remember, if you might have seen that people talk about magnetic field induced uh, problems. So these are called artificial gauge. Artificial magnetic field can be written. Uh, it's equivalent to producing artificial gauge fields 
in Bose instant condensate. Okay, so one can do such kind of projects, and we saw that density dependent gauge potential does not produce every gauge of that is so hexagonal that is. So this is what we have shown now. This is, uh, and then I talk about if time permits, then I talk about quantum phase transitions. Okay, so let me now uh, go and do uh, what we are going to do. I will tell you about the step by step process. So let me go a little bit ahead. So as I said, that finally. Huh. In order to understand the role played by impurities, we first study the effect of single impurity on the single vortex and also vortex that is. Then we show the disorder induced vortex that is melting in rotating Bose instant condensate. Finally, we show the signature of disorder induced two step vortex that is melting in Bose instant condensate. And then we generalize the problem to study disorder induced vortex that is melting in binary BEC. And then we do uh, for high temperature superconductor and then we do the quantum phase transition. So let me see how much I can go. And uh, all right. So as I said that, uh, can you see this page now? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I think I got it. Yeah. So what is our? Uh, so I have kept two equations here. One is this. The equation at the bottom is this equation of dynamical equation for superconductor. So this is called Jeanberg Landau equation. This is a phenomenological mean field equation in terms of two order parameters. Okay, here it is for one order parameter for low temperature superconductor. So now you see that mod psi square psi and you see that mod psi square term in both instant condensate also. So in both instant condensate, this is the density. Here also it is a density. Okay, so density of superconducting electrons or the Cooper pairs. So this is mod psi square psi interaction between the particles. Here we put in rotation to get the vortex. In superconductor, you have to apply the magnetic field to get the rotation uh, vortices. And A and phi are the vector potential corresponding to um, magnetic field. Phi is the scalar potential corresponding to magnetic field. So this is the equation given by J.R. Jeanberg and Landau for phenomenological theory, mean field theory for uh, superconductor, type two superconductor with one order parameter. And this is this one for uh, bose einstein condensate. Now look at the similarity between these two. Here, rotation is equivalent to applied magnetic field in our case. Okay, so if we apply magnetic field, you get what is in type two uh, type two superconductor, and if you ro apply rotation in both instant condensate, you get vortices. Now look at the similarity between them. Even though the systems are very equivalent, of course this is also like a Landau equation, Zimbabwe Landau equation, except that instead of magnetic field, I have a rotation. So rotation is equivalent to applied magnetic field. Look at the results. The lattice here is the density, which you call the vortices, density distribution, density deep here, which is six fold structure, except uh, what you call as the hexagonal lattice. Here also I have the same lattice for hexagonal lattice, okay, for type two superconductor. Now, coming from here to here is actually not straightforward. Okay. For example, this bose einstein condensate system is a bosonic system, whereas here it is the fermions forming Cooper pair, of course, to make a boson. But when I apply magnetic field, it is the fermions who respond to the magnetic field. Okay. And then the physics takes place. Now, to show from here to here the equivalence, there was a lot of calculation done by Costarius and Thales. Separately, in a separate two papers in physical review letters in 1975, I am not, I don't have the paper here. They have shown that the two systems are equivalent. That means the superconducting system, superfluid system, and of course that time both instant condensate was not there. They showed the equivalence between superfluid and superconducting system. Why is it that in superfluid also I get hexagonal that is, and I also get a hexagonal that is in superconductor. One is a bosonic system, one is a fermionic system. And he showed that the reason is that the magnus force or the force between the vortices, as the vortices move around to form a structure, they ex experience a force between them. And that force is known as the magnus force, M-A-G and U-S, magnus force. And he showed that the magnus force between the fermions or fermion vortices here, the superconductor, is the same as the magnus force in superfluid. And we show that it is the same magnus force in both instant condensate. And that is the reason why these three problems are all very equivalent to each other. This now, the, uh, yeah. So in this yes, DC sir. equation, so you yeah. solve this equation for a given potential and omega. 
Yeah. Where does this hexagonal lattice emerge? I mean, after yes. solving it, you say that hexagonal lattice emerges or... Uh, yes, yes. After solving this, it uh, hexagonal lattice emerges. Yeah. So beforehand, you you have no information. Whether no, no, no. In fact, uh, that's why I was telling you, first of all, we have to produce one vortex, okay? By And that vortex also is not produced with any rotation. I have to rotate it. So beyond a certain critical rotation, I get one vortex. Then I increase it slightly more, then I get two vortex, then I increase more, then they come and arrange among themselves and forming a hexagonal lattice. So is that there is a critical it. value of omega value? Yes, yes, there is an omega value. Yes, yes, there is a critical value Okay. for uh, finding that. All right. So now, yeah. So now I make a uh, this calculation. Now you see that now there is a, a three-dimensional problem. Okay. But we convert it to a two-dimensional problem by taking a trap potential. How do you make a trap potential? I can make it a pancake shape condensate or sugar shape condensate. Sugar shape condensate is that, the advantage is that if you want to study just one dimensional problem. Pancake shape condensate is that if you want to study two dimensional problem and three dimension of course is there. How to make a 3D gross pitevsky equation to 2D gross pitevsky equation? Because we are talking about what is this, so I need minimum two space. So this is done by what is called as the anisotropic trap, where the frequency along the z direction and the frequency in the x and y direction is kept same, which you call the omega radial. So if omega z by omega radial is greater than one, we get pancake shaped condensate, and if it's less than one, we get cigar shaped condensate. So if we take the value of four, how do I fix up these values? This is very important. We fix up this cost values because such potential cause axial alignment of the vortice. Remember the vortices are actually lines of force okay in superconductor for us it is a density gradient but they are almost like a straight line but they don't remain straight they bend actually. The moment you apply the magnetic field or electrical they bend. So or also if you change the temperature of the system they also bend and bending means two of what nearby vortices can get tangled with each other. We don't want that kind of thing, okay? Because we want to study the vortex, which are straight vortex, and they remain like that, okay? No tangle, nothing. So also the vortex at the temperature get what is called as the excitations in the so something like if you take a rope and then if you uh, hold one side and just try to shake it, you see that there are waves created inside. These are called Kelvin waves in vortex also. That means one vortex line will not be straight, but it will have a more uh, Kelvin modes, okay? I want to stop them as far as possible. So what we do is that we take a 2D vortex. That means the third dimension, we reduce it as much as possible. And the value of this one, and one can show that by if you take as four, then it suppresses the Kelvin Morse, okay? Caused by the thermal fluctuations. Kelvin Morse can be suppressed by tightening the confinement along the direction of the vortex size. So I have tightened it by putting omega Z equal by omega is four. There are other things. Experiment have shown that the time scale of vortex bending, which is longer than one second, is much longer than the time scale of dynamics of the vortex that is formation. That means we don't have to really bother about that because this is one second and this is 100 milliseconds. So by that time we will study our vortex that is phenomena and everything. But to be careful, we take it uh, pancake shape. Okay? So to solve this, we have used the program by everybody uses this program by Murugandam who has, he has written. He has also modified this program actually. He has made it parallel and all these things. When we started, we are using this program, but now I think he has a program written to uh, update in 2019 also. <coughs> so this is what is called uh, <coughs> split step crank Nicholson method. Okay. So now once we solve this uh, gross pitevsky equation, I get vortices, vortex settings and everything. How do I characterize? That is another important thing. Because characterization is not just for my satisfaction. I have to characterize in such a way that my characterization should agree with the experimental characterization. That means it should agree with the experiments. That means it should agree with what the experimental people calculate. And so first I calculate the structure factor, which is basically the Fourier transform of the density. So if I had a hexagonal vortex that is, the corresponding structure would be just six points six-fold rotational symmetry. So this is a structure factor. If I don't get this structure factor six-fold, <coughs> five-fold, for example, or seven-fold, these are the topological defects in the lattice. 
and then my lattice is no more, it is melted, okay? Then I calculate the impurity potential energy and how to show that, how does the pinning takes place in the system such that the lattice energy of the system decreases. Then I calculate the histogram of distance between each pair of vortices. If it is a regular vortex, then the distance between each pair of vortex, there will be some distance, minimum distance, isn't it? Between one and two, two and three, there will be some minimum distance. <clears throat> but if there is a complete melting of the vortex, then you will get a continuous distribution because there will be vortex everywhere. Okay, so this is the histogram. These are the two which we connect to the experiment. Correlation function, there are two correlation function because it is two-step melting. One is the orientational uh, <coughs> rotation, orientational uh, correlation is lost or transitional spatial correlation. <coughs> so these are the two correlation function, uh, which is called G6 and GK. Okay, G6 measures the degree of misalignment of the lattice vectors and GK measures that relative displacement between the vortices separated by R. So they have a big definition. So we see G6 is orientation and rotation. So it, it defined in, okay. So, uh, so you see that this is what one has to do first in an experiment. If you, whenever you want to do, whenever you want to do a theoretical calculation, you have to start with this one, where you have to show that uh, a single vortex, it enters from here by when you start the rotation. And there is a critical frequency beyond which, uh, unless you apply that, you will not get the vortex, okay? And when a single vortex comes right at the center, at the equilibrium stage, uh, you get the angular momentum one, okay? So this is what, uh, this is what is, uh, what one has to do, okay? Then you see that this is the experiment also, they did the first oh, experiment uh, like this. No? Yeah, 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 ah. it's now no, it's visible, yes. So this is the experiment also, they did exactly like this, where uh, they got a single vortex first experiment here, okay? Now let us uh, do for the effect of a single impurity. Can you see this one, effect of single impurity screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So what happens is that I have put one impurity here at the center, and the vort I rotate the condensate and the vortex enters from our side. You can see the blue one in the second screen. And then it goes in the spiral path and then come and sit at the center. Okay, so this is what is called as the vortex spinning. All right. So vortex spinning means the vortex is, in our say the impurity is modeled by an exponential function, Gaussian function actually, and the vortex is density deep. So they come and exactly sit on the tip of each other. And we say that when they sit like this, the vortex cannot move anymore. Okay, so this is what is called the vortex spinning. Now, this is the spiral path it follows when it comes inside and when it goes outside also the vortex goes in a spiral path. Okay, and in superconductor also they saw the same spiral path. Suppose uh, impurity was put here and vortex was coming. This is the uh, <coughs> contrib plot of the vortex. It was coming in a circular way and finally it got at the center. Okay, so this is the pinning mechanism, both instant condensate, and this is it is the same. So now we see what is the effect of single lattice on a lattice. Okay, so uh, Sentil, can you see this picture? Yes, effect yes. of single wave. Yeah, we are yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So now you see that this is a perfect lattice has a hexagonal structure factor, hexagonal structure factor, and then then I put one impurity somewhere in between. Okay, between these two vortices. As I change the position of the impurity, you see that the vortex that is structure gets deformed. That means, and then if I bring it from one lattice point to another lattice point, then again it comes back. So that means even a single lattice, single impurity can spoil the whole lattice structure. And how do I know from the structure factor? You see, from six fold, it has come to completely destroyed and then get back to six fold, okay, depending upon the position. How do I characterize it? I can calculate what is called as the energy. Okay, variation of the angular distribution. So angular distribution means if it's like purely hexagonal, that is the angular distribution between them is 60 degrees, 60 degree, because 360. Okay, but here, because of the deformation, as you can see the red line, which is angular deformation, it increases. Okay, which is expected. And the lattice energy decreases because it is a pinning mechanism. So the lattice gets pinned to the single impurity end. So what is the summary of this story? It is basically tells me that the whole lattice can get affected just by one impurity, in fact. Now, here we show what is called the effect of random impurities. 
So if I place the input is in a random way, just using an optical that is, you see that hexagonal that is starts from here and then it goes back and it get completely deformed. How do I characterize this? Using the structure factor, which is completely deformed and using what is called as the <coughs> uh, histogram plot. You see there is a continuous histogram plot. There is no gap. If it's a single undistorted replicas of vortex that is, then there is a gap because you find one point after some time another point after some time another point. So there is a gap in between if there is a regular structure. But if the structure is not regular, then what you get is just the continuous distribution of uh, points. So this is what is called as the characterization of vortex that is vortex mapping. So you can do the same study by using a pseudo random potential also. Let me skip this one and come to experiments. Uh, so Cynthia, can you see this heading? Yes, yes, we are seeing. I have one doubt. So okay. yeah. apart from this, what are the physical properties you are observing by, in your analysis? Your analysis physical. Your physical yeah. Any other yeah. physical uh, properties? No. No, physical, physical properties means, for example, if the lattice get completely destroyed, if it get melted, Okay. then all the properties of uh, that that is we destroy actually okay. conductivity will go off uh, thermal conductivity electrical conductivity every property will destroy actually uh, from uh, no can you go back uh, one slide you consider different types of uh, things like four or five different can you go back yeah. one slide yeah um so what difference are you seeing from one picture to other another category yeah. So uh, you see that as a random power potential. Uh, random, yes. Yeah. What yeah. difference are you observing? Yeah. So no, basically what in this picture it says that the effect of single impurity, okay? No random yeah. impurity, just one impurity, which is modeled in our calculation by a Gaussian function. Gaussian uh, e to the power minus alpha x square placed at some point. So why do I place that impurity? I place between the two vortex. So as I change the position of the impurity, single impurity, you see that the lattice has changed. How do I know the lattice has changed? You see the structure factor. When I have six points here means it is perfect six hexagonal lattice. It is still hexagonal oh. lattice, but the points are a little bit spread out. Points are a little bit spread out. Here you see, you don't see the six peaks. That means it is no more hexagonal. You can see from the picture itself. Yes. Okay. And then as I change the point further to another lattice point, when the impurity comes, it comes back again. That means if the lattice point are sitting on the vortex, then it is ordered lattice. But if it is somewhere in between, then it's a disordered lattice. Okay. Now what will happen in the impurity potential? They will be sitting randomly, isn't it? Anywhere. So what happens? That is the in real life, you see, I'm connecting to the experiment. So experiment, of course, I don't put single impurity. Experiment, I have to put random impurities and many impurities. So they will be spread out random. And then what happens? That is the idea we have to see. And that's what we have seen here. If I change the random impurities, then the lattice, you can see that computer got destroyed. Okay, so that is the melting. So that is the order disorder. And these are the characterization. But now what I have to do is, I have to connect it to the experiment. Experiment, like for example, I connect it to the TIFR experiment. What do TIFR experiment do? They take a superconductor, above TC, TC means transition temperature and below TC. They apply magnetic field to see the vortex because vortex is magnetic lines of force which is entering through superconductor. Now then what they do is that they increase the uh, amount of impurity, okay, or random strength of the impurity, they increase the magnetic field. And they see that as the magnetic strength of the magnetic field increases, the vortex that is decreases or uh, destroys. In our case, it is a bose einstein condensate. So I'm not going to apply magnetic field. Our vortex are created by rotation. So whatever they are seeing the variation with magnetic field, I should be able to see the variation with applied rotation. That means by changing the rotation, I should see the vortex that is melting in a random potential. They also have a random potential because they <coughs> dope with impurities. So this is the connection between these two. But still, there are two other connections we have to make. Huh. Can you see this picture uh, uh, connecting numerical simulation experiments? Uh, no, we are seeing, no, no, no. We are, we are seeing the effect of random impurities. Achha, achha. So now that means it is yes, not yes, moving. Yes, 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 yes. Numerical simulation of the experiments. 
Huh. So this is very important. Okay, that means I am doing the calculation in both sense and then say, but I have to connect it to the experiment, isn't it? Now experiment, what they do, they apply magnetic field. They apply magnetic field. They increase the magnetic field. They apply uh, uh, impurity, real impurity. Okay. In our case, the impurity is a random potential produced by optical that is. Our instead of magnetic field, we have what you call as the rotation. So if I increase rotation, more number of vortex comes and the vortex it is merged. And if I increase uh, uh, impurity strength, again the vortex it is merged and so on. So in experiment, they follow two common protocols. So these protocols are zero fluid cooling protocols and fluid cooling protocols. So what is zero fluid cooling? Zero fluid may share magnetic field. So experimentally what they do is that they first don't apply in magnetic field. That means no vortex. Then they cool the superconductor below TC. The moment you cool the superconductor below TC, it becomes superconductor. Once the superconductor is there, then you apply the magnetic field. So then the vortices comes inside. Now what is the thing? The vortices see the impurity growth because the impurities are already there. The vortices see the impurity growth. On the other case, is a field cooling. That means you apply the magnetic field path and lower the temperature afterwards. The difference is that the moment you come below to see all the vortices are there, but impurity is not seen enough. So impurity grows like this. So in one case, the vortices sees the impurity directly after it is uh, made. In other case, it sees the impurity much later. Okay. So this is the two procedure. So how do I do connecting simulation with TIFR experiment? Can you see this uh, with TIFR yes. experiment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. So uh, field cool state. Yeah. yeah. Field yes, cool state is always much more disordered than the zero field cool states. Field cool means you apply the magnetic field and then lower the temperature, and zero field cool means lower the temperature below superconductivity and then apply the magnetic field. These are metastable states. So what do you have to do is in the field cool state, zero field cool state, first the impurities are added and then the vortices are introduced by ramping up the magnetic field and in simulation. In our simulation, how do I do if I want to compare my calculation to the TIFR experiment? In our simulation, this is equivalent to have random impurity potential first and then that means optical that is first. That means I rotate the condensate, both instant condensate, cross circuit viscation with random potential first and then includes rotation. Then the vortex will come. Okay. In the second state, where the, in the field cool states, first I apply the rotation, then apply the impurity. That means optical that is potentially added later on. So the state where the impurities are added, adiabatically may be highly metastable. So this is the way to check the metastability state also. So let us see. Okay. So how does the two steps measure? Now I have to say two step process. So what was the two steps process? In the first step, the positional order disappears, but the orientation order is retained. As, can you see this side? What disorder uh -huh. induced? No, no, no. Okay. So. Oh, okay, is it, uh, shall we, uh, you have 10 more minutes because people will yeah, be yeah. Doing... yeah, yeah, actually yeah, I have now, just. Uh, yeah, now we are seeing just... connecting, connecting simulation with the TAFR. No, you go down. We are seeing connecting simulations. With yeah, the with the, the yeah, for experiment, isn't it? So this yes. is the way we do uh, apply the magnetic field first, then the impurity. For us, uh, impurity is added to optical that is potential. That means you added it for rotation and then apply the rotation. Okay, so these are the two different. Now let me let me see whether. So can you see this page disorder yes, induced? Yes. Disorder okay. Induced. So this will be the last page actually. So I think I should be able to finish. So two steps means what? First the orientation, uh, the, first the transitional order goes up, then the orientation order. In the when the transitional order goes up, what will happen is that first of all, we get dislocations are created. Dislocations are points of five fold and seven fold symmetry sitting together, and defects basically. And uh, discrimination's are isolated points of five and seven folds. Okay, so when the discrimination comes, <coughs> then I see that the, even the rotational symmetry goes up. So dislocations are pair of nearest neighbor lattice points with five fold and seven fold coordination, and discriminations are isolated points with five and seven fold coordination. 
okay so the structure factor when this happens when this appears the that is computer mirrors the structure factor shows a ring instead of six parts characteristics of isotropic disorder state or isotropic liquid and then i calculate the correlation function to show this okay okay so huh. can you see one picture from here this will be the last picture okay no we are seeing the top of the page yeah yeah now we are seeing yeah okay pictures. so now you see that what is happening is that the first picture is a hexagonal that is purely 64 there is no 54 nothing is order that is that means it has transition order and it is a rotational order now as i increase the magnetic field from here sorry in my case it is the rotation then i see that it has started defect producing defects what are the defects the black ones are seven four seven nearest neighbor you see instead of six i get seven and also there are some one two three four five six seven and green ones are five four so when five four and seven four stay together then the there is a disorder of course but the lattice has not completely melted the transition order is gone but the rotational order is still remain so here you see that as I increase my rotation further, I see that the more number of these defects is growing. Okay. Then, but still there is no discrimination. Discrimination is here in the red. What is red? Red one says that isolated point of sevenfold symmetry, sevenfold coordination. You see that this is the sevenfold coordination, which is isolated. That means separated one. When that appears, that means at this stage the vortex it is completely melted. This transition invariance is gone and as well as rotation invariance. And this you can see from this structure factor plot here. You can see that in the third plot C, there was no red thing, there is no isolated points of singularity 5, 4, and 7, 4. So it has still 6, 4 rotational structure, but its transition invariance is gone. But if I further increase when the disappearance, I see that its rotational things is also gone. It is no more hexagonal structure. Okay, so this is the way we do. And then of course you can calculate the correlation function. And then you see that correlation functions of our order that is looks like this. And for the disorder that is the correlation decreases. And this is what is expected. And this is exactly what they seen in TIFR experiment. And uh, this is a, some picture of disorder that is. And uh, okay, so I think until I think I will stop here. Yeah. So basically, I've tried to show that there are two step vortices that is melting, which is experimental seen in TIFR experiment, and we could reproduce it with uh, our theoretical calculation. And the idea is that now to do it for binary BEC, so that whether we can predict about something about high temperature superconductor, which has two components order parameter. So that process is going on. Okay. Oh. So thank you very much for tolerating with me. Huh? So, so uh, yeah, questions from participants the forum is open for questions discussion clarifications i think everyone is uh, <laughs> <laughs> This would be, uh, people are talking mm. about uh, Kolomogorov spectra or something. What is that Kolomogorov? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? I didn't speak uh, Kolomogorov spectra. Yeah, yeah. No? yeah. Uh, do you have some idea? People, because sometimes we, I come at, I no, no. across this word Kolomogorov uh, because to verify this uh, uh, quantum turbulence or something, people. Yes, yes. That. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. You are talking about in, uh, in connection with the quantum turbulence. Yes. Okay. So you that? see that uh, uh, quantum turbulence actually is very interesting because at every length scale you have a uh, spectra. Spectra ah. means the energy versus dispersion relation, what we call in solid, like omega. How does the energy varies with K? Ah. So when you energy varies with K in different ah. region of K, you see that there are, if you, there is a decay of turbulence. Then you see that the energy variation with K has got different power power factor, like K to the power minus 5 by 3, K to the power minus 1 by 3, and all these powers. So okay. different powers, like minus 5 by 3 matching with the decay through K to the power minus 5 by 3 is the Kolmogorov spectrum. For K to the okay. power minus 2 by 3, there is another spectrum. But they are all associated with the different ways of decays of quantum turbulence. I see. 
So let us see. So are there any questions from the others, students? Are there questions? Uh, we are not receiving any questions. <laughs> okay, so since we are not uh, receiving the questions, I would like to conclude the session by thanking Professor Bishwajayadi Doi for accepting our invitation and giving a very wonderful talk uh, about uh, experimental and theoretical results in turbulence. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Doi. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think some people, some students will write to you because they will always hesitate to ask. <laughs> yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. Sometimes the students they will write. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I will see you, Pune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yes, sure. You should come Next sometime week, and then. Week. Not, okay. not this week. This week, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.